Hi, my name is Suma Mulanuri. I'm a uh, sophomore at the Lakeside School in Seattle, and I'm also the CEO of Strata Scientific, which is a medical startup in the Seattle area. Back in 1998, the international community got together and launched what was, at the time, the most advanced piece of machinery ever built, namely the International Space Station. And though at the time it was a revolutionary uh, machine, now, though still astounding, is by many measures outdated. The machinery itself, much of it remains from 1998, and replaceable modules, like laptops, are still from 2008. Furthermore, looking at the space shuttle, which until its retirement in 2011 was our main way of getting to the International Space Station, changed very little from its initial design in 1981. To me, this draws a very fascinating parallel between the industry of space travel and the industry of medicine, in that we have many technologies which are able to, to some moderate level, accomplish their tasks, but fundamentally, do not exploit the full level of potential of the industry. And by making deliberate moves in innovation, we can further our ability to understand and to exploit the abilities of an industry. The stethoscope was first invented back in 1816 by a French physician living in Paris by named René Linac. And though prior to this, auscultation was done by placing the ear against the chest of the patient, it represented a shift in the philosophy of medicine in that it allowed for the first time the physician to look at changes in anatomy rather than symptoms in order to diagnose a patient. As revolutionary as this was, and considering how long ago it was, it still remains the same principle. The stethoscope operates on the same basic principle today. Recently, the stethoscope has become a very versatile tool. It can be used as a basic diagnosis device in COPD, asthma, heart valve issues, and heart failure. Acting as such a versatile preliminary diagnosis tool and allowing us to understand what the next tests are in order to better diagnose the patient makes it both powerful, but at the same time, the skill required to use it, the fact that it requires a highly trained ear, makes it an art rather than being a true science. Back in 1954, the AHA published an article in the journal Circulation on Phonocardiography. And they opened by saying, Auscultation of the heart is an art in which the conclusions of the observer depend upon acuity of hearing, sense of timing, and appreciation of tonal quality of complex transient noises. These noises are often near the lower limit of audibility in respect to intensity and also frequency. In my opinion, they well captured the difficulty of auscultation. It lacks the object uh, objectivity of the rest of the medical industry in that it requires the user to be more of an artist than a scientist. At the time, their solution was a phonocardiograph. The phonocardiograph was a device designed to record heart sounds and visualize them. Through the visualization process, one could theoretically increase the accuracy of diagnosis by being able to see what heart sounds, which are, either di which are difficult to hear, either because of them being very quiet or near the limits of the human ability to hear. In 1954, they closed the same article by saying, the discriminating use of phonocardiography will undoubtedly be increasingly helpful in the diagnosis of valvular and congenital heart disease. Back in 1954, they understood the difference and the gap between the stethoscope and the rest of their Im cardiac imaging technology. Therefore, one can only begin to imagine the massive difference today between the stethoscope, which remains unchanged from 1816, to the cardiac imaging technology that we have. The phonocardiograph didn't catch on. It had a few gaps. It lacked the portability of a modern stethoscope, and it had a very cumbersome procedure. What this meant was that it couldn't compete with the stethoscope's ability to be used intuitively and very easily. <coughs> Furthermore, insufficient digital signal processing techniques. This is how the device would filter out ambient noises and do the visualization process was insufficient to be effective. Consequently, the device was not adopted. The stethoscope remains in use today. This was a history that I was faced with about two summers ago when I approached on how to look in designing the next generation of stethoscopes. And to me, there were four clear requirements. It has to be a cost-effective device, and it has to be portable. This is to match the intuitive ability uh, and the intuitive nature of the current stethoscope. Furthermore, it needs to be objective through visualization. This is the improvement that the phonocardiograph promised but could not deliver on. 
And lastly, it needs to be able to record hard sounds for serial comparisons. That way, by using big data techniques, one can not only better understand the patient, but one can furthermore begin to understand the population as a whole. Now, I actually have the device with me. It's quite simple. It consists of a case, much like any other smartphone case, with a stethoscope bell on the back. By attaching it to a, start, to a smartphone, one can use it as a digital stethoscope. So using these sort of visualization techniques, you can see how a physician or a nurse or an MA has the ability to be able to be much more accurate in their diagnosis and their overall understanding of the heart sound. Furthermore, imagine in medical education, wherein being able to view the heart sound gives one a full understanding of the entire cardiac cycle. Using devices like this um, and using technology like this, which is the phonocardiography app, I believe that it's possible to further the ability of the stethoscope to be an effective medical tool. But to me, it also became clear that this device not only had the potential in the healthcare pro uh, professional world, but also among patients and the healthcare consumer. Take, for example, heart failure. Heart failure affects about 23 million people worldwide and about 5.8 million people in the United States. Furthermore, it's about, it's about a $39 billion a year cost to the United States, and about 50% of patients with heart failure die within five years. This makes it not only a very large, but also an immediate and pressing problem among patients as a chronic disease. Currently, this is monitored using weight. By looking at the weight change, um, you can begin to get an idea of a prediction of a heart failure episode. But as you can imagine, weight is a very non-specific identifier. Namely, that it's very easy to change weight, regardless of whether or not it's in fact a heart failure episode. Additionally, considering the fact that you visit your physician on a three or six month basis, there's a huge gap of time in which you're not being monitored. With a device like the Steth.io, one can begin to monitor for an S3, a third heart sound. This heart sound can be an indicator of a heart failure episode months in advance. And by doing that, you can medicate properly. And furthermore, you can potentially reduce the number of hospitalizations and increase the overall quality of life for heart failure patients. Take also asthma. Asthma affects almost 253 million people worldwide and is still considered an underdiagnosed and an undertreated problem, especially in the developing world and especially among children. Furthermore, about 50% of these people have an attack each year and there are about 255,000 deaths from asthma each year. Imagine the ability to remotely diagnose asthma. With the increasing ubiquity of smartphones and the increasing prevalence in the developing world, it is possible to use a device with a Steth.io to be able to diagnose asthma where a doctor may be far away. Furthermore, one can begin to remotely judge the child's asthma attack. Imagine for a moment that there are two parents, or, and they have their child who is having an asthma attack. They may be on the phone with a triage nurse, and they may be trying to quantify and explain that asthma attack, but that is a very difficult process. By using a device as a Steth.io, the triage nurse can get immediate feedback by understanding immediately what the sound of the child's lungs is. And furthermore, they can make an accurate diagnosis of whether or not that child needs to be taken to the ER. Furthermore, a device like this can be used by the patient to, to track the progress of their own asthma over time and understand the triggers and the patterns involved allowing them to be more prepared for when they may have an asthma attack through the use of big data and understanding their patterns. All of this, I believe, ultimately surrounds the patient. Smartphones are becoming increasingly ubiquitous, both in the United States and around the world. Furthermore, a low-cost device with Steth.io, when paired with it, can be used in order to create a connected medical device. In this way, much in the way that the thermometer was brought from the healthcare professional to the patient in order that they may monitor their fevers. Furthermore, the stethoscope 
can be brought from the medical professional to the patient using a device with Steth IO so that they can, with minimal technical knowledge, track their chronic conditions like heart valve issues, COPD, asthma, um, and heart failure. Through a device like this, I truly believe that one can improve quality of life through data-informed decisions. Thank you.